Hey guys, it's me. Welcome to another edition of the vlog. Um, so Teen Wolf this week. I apologize. Um, normally I make an attempt to wear some sort of a Teen Wolf outfit and I kind of promised Gloria I was going to go with my American rag top, but um, I'm going on a trip tomorrow. <laughs> and so I stayed up late last night, uh, too late for me to do the hair and everything. And this morning I've got so much stuff I have to get done before my trip. So I hope you guys will forgive me for skipping a week. Okay, so this week's episode was called conditioned terminal and uh, amazing amazing stuff is going on here basically three big things that this episode covered three and there are major things within those things um so one we had Parrish who um we got to see a flashback of him working with Lydia and you know then we saw Parrish sitting in his apartment which by the way is crowded and I'm still going with dragon mind you um he's flipping the card around and the queen of diamonds looks remarkably like Miss Martin but as he's talking to Lydia he was telling her about this dream that he'd had he was well naked walking through the forest and he comes to a big tree and of course we all know it's the Nemeton so clearly the Nemeton was calling him there and why apparently to burn bodies. Interesting. So I want to say that about five minutes later into the episode, my husband goes, what if he's destroying the the people that the, the Jed doctors have made? And indeed, that actually seems to be the case. On the Dread doctors, it turned out that um, after Tracy and Donovan, the two that we did know about, and also Mr. Egan, Eagle Claw, whatever, um, <laughs> from the very first episode. Um, after those three, we now know that there was another one. I'm guessing he was the other whole. Um, it was this guy, Lucas, who was gay and apparently a little shy, and then all of a sudden he became aggressive and assertive, and the guy he was with wound up with this... It looked like a missing chunk of skin, so I was like, ooh, is he part Wendigo? And no, he's actually part scorpion spines and walk a lot of. Sorry, I have a thing for against bugs. But so at the end of the episode, they were left with this uncomfortable question of what do you do with these bodies? You know, they took Tracy away um, on, on, while Sheriff Stilinski protested. But, you know, um, De Deaton had made a point. It was either you take these bodies away and compromise your crime scene or you have to start answering questions about what's going on in Beacon Hills. End of the episode, they were trying to figure out what to do with Lucas's body. He was left in the morgue and in walks Parrish, who's carrying him off to the Nemeton, um, and lighting himself on, up on fire. So it would seem that the Nemeton is using Parrish as a means to keep all of this under wraps. So for now, it seems like the Nemeton's on their side, I guess. Okay, so point two, we have Kira. And um, I'm going to say now this isn't so much of a surprise for those of you who saw the Comic-Con footage, but I'm going to assume you didn't. So clearly something is up with Kira, because Kira could soon it out while she was fighting Lucas. Liam had taken him down. They're trying to figure out what to do with him. In comes cause Kira, just shouting in Japanese with her sword, going in for a kill strike. It took a second when Scott tried to stop her for it to register and she did not look pleased. So I'm going to say that's definitely a problem. Okay, I saw the, and, and, and for those of you who saw the Comic-Con footage, you know exactly why I'm like, I'm, yet yeah, that's, it's a problem. Then the third thing, the Dread Doctors. So this is kind of, obviously the Dread Doctors are the big bad, so I'm gonna talk about a lot about this. One of the sucky things is that Malia was trying to get over the fact that she had just seen Tracy die in front of her and these creepy guys came out and she's trying to explain it and Styles didn't believe her. What a terrible boyfriend. Because honestly, out of anyone on this in this thing, Malia is like the least likely to lie only because there's no point to lying for her, right? So it seemed really crappy that um, Styles would think she was lying. So the Dread Doctors came and went. Malia was doing her own investigating. Go Malia! Um, she was sitting there in Tracy's room, which is by the way, like the least secure crime scene ever. <laughs> I'm just saying. And she found a book with a note, and I didn't see who signed the note, I'm sorry. Um, 
but there was a note that said, I found this book, it might be what you're looking for, and it said The Dread Doctors. We found out that Theo is in cahoots with The Dread Doctors. Okay, so I'm disappointed it's not Deucalion, but still, it's somebody had to have known all of these things about what's going on in Beacon Hill, so I'm kind of curious because someone had to have known the very specifics of I, because I really don't believe that Theo came from that pack. I, I really don't, and I don't, I, I think that there's some super juiced up version, which is why he can turn into a wolf, because it's supposed to be rare, and I can't wait to see Theo exposed as a fraud. And I hate the fact that he's starting to gain some, you know, like, in with the pack because he saved Lydia. Clearly, Styles feels the same way. So it was no surprise that, um, the Dread Doctors who had busted out Donovan, um, Theo came in to talk to him and say that, you know, like, every instinct he had would be to go after the sheriff, but Theo needed him to go after Styles. So the episode ended with Donovan showing up with a mouth in his hand and grabbing onto Styles. so that's... <sighs> yeah, I discovered that this season I really can't eat while I watch Teen Wolf, and I am, like, not a person that gets, like, grossed out during things. Like, I can eat during bones, okay? You know, the first scene where it's like dead bodies and it's gross and whatever. But for whatever reason, the medical, like, torture gore kind of stuff, it's just, ugh, I can't do it. So, yeah, I'm gonna need to figure out a different time to eat. Oh, and uh, Lydia asked Parrish to teach her how to fight. So, so far we have confirmation of a couple things. One, it really did appear that, um, the when Lydia was thinking about um, Parrish and her flash, um, you know, him on fire and whatever, it actually seemed to be that, him burning the bodies. So we kind of have confirmation of that. Um, we've already got other stuff set in motion. There's definitely something with Kira that's going to be pulling her apart. Um, Lydia's going to learn how to fight to be a badass. Um, we already have Styles in Jeopardy. And we already have Malia kind of getting distanced from the thing. Now, although she's given up trying to figure out who the desert wolf is, you know, there's definitely, there's definitely some firm divisions going into this, into the, the pack right now. Um, I don't, really don't know what this girl who clearly has beef with Liam, I, I, I would really wish that they would kind of explain this only because... This continued, I have beef, whatever. Although Liam trying to give her $12 for the drinks was just funny and sweet. But anyways, um, she needs money for something. Everyone needs money for something. It's too bad she wasn't here during the whole benefactor thing. She might have made some money. It's really terrible. That's why my brain works. Also, I really want to say, I know that they built this big, beautiful library as a new set and whatever, but the hard thing I have with this is that it was easy enough to handle the shift from the one location from the Atlanta high school to um, the high school that they're using now. But the problem I have with this library is that we've already seen a library and it was just a tiny rinky dink library. This is like gorgeous and beautiful and like where on earth on the campus is this? Where did this library come from that apparently has been around since Derek was there? I'm just, where? Why? I, I can't spend, because why would they go to this teeny, like, is it like an underclassman library? Do you have to be an upperclassman to go to this one? Well, that's it for me. Um, I'm going to go on a trip. I'll be back by next week. <laughs> so next week I'll be dressed up and everything will be fine and whatnot. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channels. There is a, oops. There's a handy dandy little thing right there, that little green circle. Just click on it and it'll say subscribe and you can subscribe to my channel and then you won't miss any of these. Um, if you like this video, subscribe, link, comment, share. I love it all. It's nice to know that you guys are watching and that you appreciate this. Um, and if you want to find me on the internet, I have a website. It is WhitneyDrake.com. I have a Twitter page. I am at WhitneyD. I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. It's Geek Pirate Mom. I don't post there as much as I should, but I'm working on that. Um, I have a Tumblr account. I am Winged Kiari. Sometimes it's not safe for work. I'm just warning you. I mean, it's Tumblr. Rarely is Tumblr safe for work. Um, I do have an Instagram and a Google Plus account, but you can find those linked over on my website. WhitneyDrake.com. Well, I hope you guys have a great week. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure Styles will be okay. I mean, really, right?
and before I forget, bisexual Brett. That's a thing. They they actually just need to say it. Let's yay, yay.